Howdy doody, guys. Today we're going to be looking at the difference between distance and displacement. They are very similar. However, there are a couple of small differences that make them so that they are actually separate things. And so we're going to look at those today and make sure that we understand the difference because that's going to be very important as we get into speed and velocity and several other things dealing with kinematics. So let's start off with distance because that's something that you're already familiar with. The distance is how far that you travel along a certain path. Okay? So this is how far you travel along a given path. Okay? For example, if I start at my house and decide that I'm going to go running, and I run north for 100 meters, and then I run east for 200 meters, and then I run south for 100 meters, and then, yeah, you guessed it, I'm going to go back west for 200 meters to go back to my house. The distance traveled would be 100 plus 200 plus 100 plus 200, or 600 meters. Okay, so that's how far you've traveled along a given path. Now, displacement is also a length. However, it's the length and direction of the direct path from your... You don't spell your with an F, do you? Your initial or starting to your final point. Okay. So since it's length and direction, then you can probably guess that displacement is a vector. Okay, now it's from our initial point to our final point. So if we go back to the situation that we were talking about before where I was running from my house around the block, if I start at my house, I go north, east, south, west, so my starting point is at my house. My final point is also at my house, so the distance or the length from my starting to final point is zero. So zero meters would be my displacement. All right, now displacement is a vector. Distance is what we call a scalar. We've talked about that in class. Scalar is just something that has a magnitude and a unit. It doesn't have any direction, but the vectors should have a direction. Okay, so let's look at a couple more examples. Okay, so let's look at these where we've got, it's giving us an initial position, it's giving us a final position, and then it's asking us for delta x. Delta x is the displacement. Okay, so anytime you see delta x, that is the change in position, right? So that is the final position minus the initial position. Now we always put x0 or x0 is what it's called. x0 is our initial position because 0 means at time 0. Okay, so this is always going to give us our displacement. Okay, so let's now take this. And we will look at the examples that we have here and work through just a couple. Okay? So let's start at a given spot. Initial spot is zero, so that means I'm starting here. And then I'm going 40 centimeters in the positive direction. So 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay? And I'm going in that direction. And so delta x, which is the displacement, is 40 centimeters. And you can either say to the right, or when we're working just in the horizontal direction, we know this is positive, to the left is negative, which means I could have just said positive 40 centimeters. 
to designate that it's to the right. Okay, this will work as long as we're just working in one direction, one dimension. As soon as we start looking at things that are in more than one direction, then we can't use the plus minus anymore. You'll use the degrees like you learned back with vectors. Okay, well, let's look at another one. Let's start at negative 60 centimeters, and then we'll go to negative 20 centimeters. Okay, so we'll start at, looks like we're going to have to go by 20s this time. Okay, so we'll start at negative 60 and go up to negative 20, which again is 40 centimeters. Now, even though we're on the negative side of the graph, it's still going in the positive direction. So again, my displacement is going to be positive 40 centimeters. Okay, let's scroll down just a little bit. Okay, now in both of these cases, the distance is the same, right? Because the distance is the path traveled. Okay, so assuming that we're tra traveling a straight path, the distance in this case will also be 40. The distance in this case will also be 40. Okay, now last one, we're going to start at 20 centimeters and end at negative 40. So 10, 20, and then we'll go down, negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40. And so we'll start at positive 20, and then we'll go all the way back to negative 40, which as you can see is in the negative direction. We're heading that direction, so that will be a negative 60 centimeters will be my displacement for that one. Now, if I were giving a distance, I wouldn't need the negative because distance is a scalar. It doesn't need a direction. And so, I mean, what does it mean to say, I ran negative one miles? It doesn't really mean anything, right? It means that you ran one mile, okay? You're not going to give a negative when you're talking about a distance. If you're talking about a displacement, that negative can designate which direction that mile was in, okay? Let's scroll down really quick. We're going to look at one more thing on this page. Okay, now we're going to add them together. Now remember up at the top, my displacement for, vec for A was 40 centimeters. My displacement for B was 40 centimeters. These are both positive. And then my displacement for C was negative 60 centimeters. Okay, so now we're going to be adding vectors together, right? So we're going to take vector A and vector B, which are both in the same direction, so 40 this way. And then B, head to tail, is also 40. And you'll note that your resultant vector will start here and in there, and so it will be positive 80 centimeters, or 80 centimeters to the right. Okay, let's look at the next one, vector B plus vector C. So if I draw vector B here, that's 40. And then if I draw a vector C, that was negative 60. Remember, I got to do it head to tail. So I go this way first, and then I go back that way. So if I go 40 to the right, and then 60 to the left, that is going to result, use a different color here just to make it a little bit easier to see, in my resultant vector starting here and ending there, which is going to be a negative 20 centimeters. All right. And then for our last one, let's do A plus B plus C. All right. So we'll start here. There's my 40 for A. There's my 40 for B. And then C is negative 60, which will end up here. Okay. And so when I add those together head to tail, then it results in a vector that starts here and ends there, right? We started our starting point and our, at our ending point, so that would be a positive 20 centimeters. All right, so hopefully you got the idea of displacement. It's just vectors, but that's what displacement is. It's a vector, so we have to have both the direction and a magnitude. Last thing I want to show you, just one more example, is 